I am very excited to introduce Nada, who will be guiding us in this session. Uh, and Nada is an interdisciplinary artist, designer, and facilitator. Her life's work integrates community building practices, trauma informed work, embodied learning, expressive arts, and biomimicry design principles. By weaving various tools, she creates out of the box spaces for others to experience their, their essence and connect to their creative potential. Uh, so without further ado, I will pass it over to Nada. So, so sorry. Um, yeah, I was trying to connect from my laptop, but something is up and I was avoiding my phone so that I can see everybody, but we just have to do with what is. So thank you for your patience. And yeah, it really, it's like an exercise to stay present with this, you know, and not like, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much. Uh, now you can hear me and um, trying to check with, connect with everyone who's here. It's nice to see everybody. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna keep it still in the time. We lost a bit of time, but it's okay. C'est la vie. So quickly, quickly, quickly. Um, so I'm Nada. I'm, I, I, I have many hats and one of them is to be a cook. And last year I was a cook for the Global Gathering in, in Egypt, in Siwa. And it was just beautiful to cook for 120 people having helpers and every day decide, okay, how are we gonna organize? And I mean, for me, cooking is, is my love language. I really, I really love mm -hmm. being in the kitchen and nourishing people. Uh, also because I don't like talking too much. So it's nice to be like observing and connecting from a different way. Um, and I'm doing a session today. Uh, it was supposed to be like a performing our personal food history. What I'm really interested in is what we used to eat when we were young, uh, who was the cook at home, um, why personal food history is mainly connecting to memories uh, and because it's sometimes very different from the country we, we, we lived in, from the nation's history, like food history. Um, I was living in Egypt, but I was eating uh, Syrian food mixed with African food uh, because whoever was cooking. So I grew up with different uh, food tastes. So this is what I'm really interested about. I, what, what you ate when you were young and who were the cooks and what is your connection to food? And I wanted to do a quick check in, like your name, where you're from and... Uh, like a quick check-in, how, how do you feel in your internal body uh, if you were a food? Like what, what would you be right now if you were porridge, if you feel like porridge or if you feel like... <laughs> or I don't know, if you feel like a nice uh, designed fruit salad on a plate of, you know, like this is what I'm curious about. And what is your connection to food? So we can go into... Uh, a quick check-in like that. I would love to hear everybody. Do we just unmute and go ahead? Yeah, and actually to make it um, more practical, I, if you go first, like if you go first, you pass it to someone, like say the name of the next person so that we don't stay. Okay, I'll go first. <laughs> yeah. Um, my video is off because I'm actually actual food right now i'm breastfeeding my <laughs> little baby <laughs> so i feel like food like all of me <laughs> um but if i would be a food i think i'd be egyptian always mangoes it's just this mm. one mango um variety that i absolutely love and i wouldn't eat anywhere else in the world um, and I am Sara, I'm calling in from Cairo, Egypt. Now, that what was the last prompt, how I feel internally? But you already said, like, uh, you feel like a mango? I, f I feel like food, like I am food. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and the last prompt was, what is your connection to food? My connection to food is complicated. 
I like giving it attention and sometimes feel like so drained by how much attention I give food. Mm. And I pass it on to Maria. Hi, I'm Maria from Bombay, um, India. Um, sorry, uh, where did we have to start? What what food we feel like internally, right? Um, yes. So I uh, do feel again like mangoes because uh, here it's mango season and you know, the scent of mangoes kind of takes over the whole place and uh, everybody is like consumed by the mangoes. It's like everybody will have mango at least once a day. And if you don't, it's like sacrilege. <laughs> um, and uh, so each uh, part of India, again, has very diverse cuisine. Um and the mango is eaten or prepared or used uh, by different way, you know, in different uh, uh, ways by the different areas and the different. Uh, so, yeah, so like uh, I am uh, from a Bori family, which is a small um migrant uh, sect of uh, Shia Muslims uh, uh, who kind of settled in Gujarat. So our cuisine is uh, influenced heavily by the land that we moved to and by the lands that we moved through to get here. Uh, and of course, it has our own very specific uh, taste and culture and um, in fact, like so much of our culture, our festivals, our, you know, process of celebrating and grieving and all of that kind of uh, is so deeply connected to food and centered around food. Um, even on the New Year, so we eat on this uh, single plate called the thal. So it's a communal form of eating. So around um, seven to nine people uh, sit and eat together on the same plate. Um, and on the new year, it's also like referred uh, internally by us lovingly as the Thal's birthday, the plate's birthday. And the plate is kind of like a reflection of the moon. And uh, on the new year, we're supposed to make uh, around 50 dishes or so. And uh, we have this... Uh, system or format of eating where usually we begin with ice cream <laughs> which uh, and then we alternate between sweet and savory so we call it karas mithas so it's one sweet dish one savory dish one sweet dish one savory dish and it goes on and on and uh, there are customs to you know uh, how we wash our hands how uh, there's a tasting of salt before the meal starts. Um, and yeah, there is a lot of importance given to making sure not a single grain goes to waste. Mm -hmm. And uh, the food is savored completely by the hands and by all five fingers. Uh, because uh, touch is such an essential part of uh, understanding and uh, exploring food and really uh you know um experiencing it to the fullest um mm. we also start off our meal with a you know um like on special occasions with sweet rice uh that uh and there is a lot of like each dish has significance and symbolism behind mm. it and the ingredients that are used also stand for something so it's like it's like a spell each dish is like a spell and you're putting together these uh, ideas and kind of preparing something that holds so much more than just nourishment or you know uh, it's it's much much more than just uh, feeding your stomach and uh, yeah. or keeping you you know alive uh, but yeah. I was also like uh, your 
everybody kind of has a cook and you know having a, a family in which basically everybody was working for a time so the a lot of the cooking does get left to the maids uh, and the cooks and the ones we had were from mangalore so i also <laughs> grew up with uh, the art cuisine which is very much based around fish and coconut yeah. so all <laughs> those <laughs> Hi, Maria, so sorry. sorry because we no it's okay because we're going to go into the stories a bit later and uh since this is a check in i i was just really sorry i no, just got a little carried away it's a, it's fine i really enjoy listening um but because i have also questions for this like everything that you said we are going to to go into it um all together uh because i'm also very curious <laughs> And I was really wondering, like, if you cook, do you cook yourself or do you have someone that cooks for you uh, right now? Like, do you cook your own meals? Do you cook for your family? Um, like, really, your personal connection to, to food, you uh, right. as, uh, as Maria. Right. Yeah. So do you cook? Just to know yourself. Uh, I do cook, uh, but uh, I also have people cook for me like my masi is really really good at bori food and just the food mm. that she cooks for herself we live like 5 minutes apart so mm. she usually takes on the day to day cooking for uh, both of us um mm. i love to cook and i do enjoy really cooking bori food and mangalorean food both um mm mm-hmm. and i love cooking with my friends and cooking for people i love Uh, mm-hmm. and also like we have a huge street food culture here and so it's almost like you have relationships with the street food vendors who are preparing yes. you know the food for you fresh so i mean the chefs yeah. are always very visible most of the time it's not in you know yeah. like the very western concept of like uh, the chefs are invisible kind of in the kitchen and aren't really a uh, part mm-hmm. of the experience No. Thank you Maria. Would you like to pass it to someone else? Yeah, sure. For a second, uh, for the second. Yes. Ala. Ala. Okay, we can we can go to someone else until Ala comes back. Vision Rainbow would you like to go? <laughs> I can't hear you. Actually, I think no one can hear you. I can't hear as well. Uh No. Technology. Technology. <laughs> 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 okay vision rainbow is it okay if we go with someone else until you fix your mic yes great uh mel melanie mel mel mm. i'm moo <laughs> how do i get mel moo that's right I should be moo <laughs> anyway that's all right moo <laughs> okay um so um marshmallow came to mind um it's a bit external isn't it you know i am a little bit pink and squishy <laughs> but then i thought um um i'm very sweet as well i'm a sweet <laughs> person and um and then it's kind of like childlike and playful isn't it the marshmallow i imagine it's little face yeah um <laughs> um okay so so that's me as a food where where are we coming from where are we coming from is that that means i'm i'm well i'm i'm am i coming somewhere am i going somewhere right now um where are you coming uh, from i might ma- okay there we go <laughs> I'm my movement. <laughs> um, I'm um uh I'm in Gundangar and Darug country which is um the uh, like uh these like epic mountains 
um, and I'm specifically in a place of waterfalls um, and we're about um, two and a half hours out of Sydney yeah, mm. in Aust- Australia. Yeah. And my relationship with food. Um, yeah, as you said, okay, like, okay, um, how do I answer this? Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like, in, you know, I'm like, I'm like an, a little bit of a, a, an independent person. I cook for myself. It's very um, haphazard, uh, very uh, simple and convenient and uh, just what I have, what is there. Um, and yeah, so that, that, that's there. That's, that's part of me and my connection. Um, I've just, I've just had a quite an epic, um, uh, change in my, uh, relationship to food or my, yeah, my, my kind of food routine. And so, um, yeah, I, I guess that's like a really big part of my connection with food now so that is that um i i um go on pindapada and pindapada is a buddhist tradition um and i i'm go, i go twice a week but i'm about to go five days a week so basically i just receive um what's given to me i get i, I just um i re- and i um I yeah I kind of I kind of live off a one meal a day um one main meal a day but mm. then um since I'm not a nun yet <laughs> but I, um I also have this like sneaky um like kind of like play food <laughs> that I have in the night <laughs> which where I'm like <laughs> I'm not fully I'm not fully following the rules yet <laughs> That's my relationship with food. Yeah, that's enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, um, Katerina. Hello, hello. Hello. Hey. <laughs> um, uh, 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 so. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. yes. You want to go? Yeah, hi. Uh, can I share now? Is my turn? Yeah. Okay, so my name is Riti. Yeah, my name is Riti and I'm calling from Hyderabad, India. And uh, the three questions that were there, one was, uh, the first question, can you clarify what the question was? Because the others I know. What food do you like? No, it's, how it's your internal check-in through a food uh how do you feel right now if you were a food i feel it's a very love-hate relationship with food where i feel i'm kind of getting into liking i am not a very foodie i don't eat i eat a lot but i eat in portions so it becomes very difficult because i never feel satiated with food like okay I've had a meal and I feel full for a little while that often does not happen so my struggle with food really is oh I like salty or I don't like sweet so much I don't like oily food like these I'm aware of these pointers I'm aware of but what what I am not aware of is when I get hungry suddenly I feel like okay there's a pang of hunger that I can't deal with and I can't understand at that time what I really need. And when I look back, I'm like, okay, 15 minutes, I had just 15 minutes before I had a, I had, I had a meal, which was about uh, two, two chapatis or a bowl full of rice or something like that, which is, which looks enough to go about at least for two hours, but that does not happen. So I think that's my struggle with food. And I'm kind mm. of making a relationship where I'm trying to understand what I really like and what I don't. So that's the journey that I'm at. And uh, yeah, that is something that I would like to share. Thank you. No, oh, no, I want to know what food are you? What food are you now? <laughs> what food am I? I think I am rice and dal, like Indian dal chawal. That's what I am. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> mm. 
Thank you, Mu. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, can you say your name again? Because it's written something else than what you said. Yeah, my name is Riti. R-I-T-I. R-A-T-I, Rati. Yeah. Okay, you would be, you you pass to someone else. Okay, Riti. I pass it to is Ale there? Like she did that person complete? No. Katrina would you like yeah. to go first because you're supposed to go. Sorry? I said Katrina, would you like to go first? Because you're supposed you were talking. So yeah. Uh, so today I am, and in the last couple of days, I am gelatin. <laughs> it feels like gelatin. <laughs> and not even very solid. <laughs> it's a bit like someone put too much water for the amount of uh, <laughs> powder. <laughs> um, it's a nice color, and a nice smell on this gelatin. <laughs> and... Uh, where am I calling from? I'm calling from the house of a friend. I'm uh, babysitting her dog <laughs> uh, in, uh, in Lisbon, in Portugal. And uh, my relationship to food is an evolving one. Um, I really love food. I find it uh, a great pleasure. <laughs> I find that it, uh, it's very linked to sociality as well. How could it not being a Mediterranean person, right? And um, it's a very, very rich uh, cultural experience as well. And uh, it says so much about people, about history, about the environment, um, where we are. And actually, my mom just gave me a super cool book called The Global History of Portuguese Food. It's like huge. And it's a collection of um, scientific articles on food. Uh, on food history as well and it's super interesting like I just read uh, an article on how Jewish presence in Portugal influenced traditional Portuguese cuisine and I find it absolutely fascinating because that's how basically big historical events end up on the individual level and uh, I find it extremely fascinating at the same time i also associate to food a lot of pressure on um, aesthetics and so many times i'm like should i eat this it's going to make me fat and i hate this so much and it's really something i'm actively trying to deconstruct mm. inside of me uh, so yeah it's a it's a, a complex thing because it's part of daily life and I shall pass it to uh, Allah. Where are you going to go next? Thank you. Hi. Um, I'm, my name is Alain. I'm from Sudan, but I'm joining from Johannesburg, South Africa. Uh, am I audible? OK. Um, yeah. Uh, I think I would choose nuts. Not because I woke up salty, but like most probably yes. But um, I just like the idea of too many layers and the creaminess and stuff like that. Uh, but my to answer my connection about my relationship to food, um, I've recently joined a boarding school, and when we were doing orientation, we were just told that we have no kitchen in the dorms, and I was so frustrated. And I don't, I don't normally cook. But I was like, why is there no food, no no kitchen? And they were mm -hmm. like, no, because because the teenagers, what if we something just buried and stuff like that? I'm like, okay. And then um, that this caused me a lot of frustration and I didn't know where it was coming from. And the other side of the story that we were served three meals and three snacks a day. And for me, that's more than I need for a day. And at some point, I just stand in the quiet and asking myself, why am I going to eat this meal just because it's served and I'm not actually hungry. So I would just be there asking myself if I'm really hungry or my, but my body needs something now or no. Mm. And at some point I just ended up eating one meal a day and I'm okay with it. I also have my snacks, but my snacks are also nuts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, are these all the questions? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. 
if you want to say something yeah, yes <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> no who else is i think namali mm-hmm. yeah. thank you um so i'm namali uh, i'm calling from colombo sri lanka um mm-hmm. to if i were a food this i don't know i've been thinking this whole time um i have settled on i'm a part of overcooked rice right now <laughs> sorry i'm laughing but it's so beautiful <laughs> i just see it so clearly <laughs> i mean um i feel very bland very just like but also ready to absorb some flavor just you know and uh, of course like i think almost everybody said you know the relationship with food is just so complicated um i love food um and i think like um katrina said uh it's you know you you said how it's about aesthetic right you won't look so good if you eat a certain food i'm actually in a place where some foods are now starting to make me sick Mm-hmm. uh you know my body is just unwell because of certain foods and it's really frustrating um do i cook yes um since you know um my husband and i made a home together like 3 years ago and i've slowly started cooking more and then i quit my job so i'm at home more so i you know cook even more now and it's i f- i used to be a, a pianist um and an actress and you know i used to write a lot um and i think perfectionism is something that really kind of held me back which is why i don't do a lot of those things anymore and food recently just cooking recently is giving me a new creative outlet um and it doesn't have that perfectionism attached to it um because it's in a new home it's um you know with and my daughter is 3 and she just loves everything i cook even if it's terrible <laughs> you know um so that that's really mm. great and um i think food is something that my husband and i both really connect on and we both love having people over to cook you know to we cook meals for them we i don't know even if we just like order food like you know it's just we just love having people over and just like you know sharing meals together it's so wonderful mm. um i think that's it yeah. yes okay yeah. um my part to is dan going to share <laughs> yeah Jen Dan you want to you want to share? No, he said pass pass. Huh? <laughs> I put in chat. I put in the chat. <laughs> um, I can go quickly like um I I feel now like a uh, chopped coriander with so much lemon so it's like <laughs> like this <laughs> uh with salt. Um this this how I feel internally and uh on my and also for the new people uh katrina who came and like what is this thing what is this space about like for me food is everything that everybody said like it's so complex it's so big it's it's so it comes with so much emotions and the uh, history and wars and uh, genocides and you know it's like carrying so much stuff and also carrying so much uh memories and uh, joy and uh, yeah <laughs> what i just remembered katrina sri lanka is full of portuguese food because <laughs> you know we had that like that dutch portuguese colony <laughs> mm. and today what i'm really curious about is like your house's history like it's not your country history but your house um who was cooking in your house and who Uh, what kind of foods did you eat even if you were portuguese maybe you have a capo verde cook who came and you're just eating capo verde food you know um and this is what i'm really curious about um like how did you learn about cooking and how you record recipes like how do you cook how, do you do you take recipes from your grandmothers um uh, do you evolve them because this is what i did like i 
I was spending, like the cook in our house was my grandmother. Like we were living with my grandmother. My mom doesn't cook. So I don't, I never, I won't say I never, but I mean, her food was not great, but you know, I, I never really uh, eat from my mom's hand. You know, it was mainly my grandmother, the main, la mama, you know? And, um, and uh, so I spent most of my free time just spending time in the kitchen with my grandmother and, and this is how I got connected to food, just really spending time. And I didn't know I could cook until I lived on my own. And like, it was like, oh, wow, I can, I know. Ah. And I want, I'm very curious about you guys. And um, how did you learn about cooking for those who are cooking? And how do you record and share recipes? Like, how, how does this exchange happen in the family or, or with yourself? So, um, and so I'm going to ask these questions here Dan do you want to write them because I this is good so how did you learn about cooking how do you record and share recipes and maybe one food that you remember from childhood that is like the food of the house you know like this is the the comes with so much memories and uh, and yeah something like that mm, yeah And also, I want to go because because of the technical issues that we had. Um, my intention for today was to really, from the small dialogue that we're going to have about this, to write a really small text, like um, like a free writing text, and generate movement from this text. To to yeah, because I like to to mix different disciplines together. Um, so if we have time, we, we will see, but I'd like to go into the, the dialogue uh, first. I'm curious about your stories, guys. What happened in your house, in the kitchen? <laughs> Sorry, your hands up. Yes, I wanted to answer those questions because it's bringing up a lot for me. My mother also doesn't cook. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, her signature dishes were like summer house dishes of like, let's make pasta with hot dogs or <laughs> I don't know, like some random quick dish that would feed the kids. Mm -hmm. I, I have a lot of um, paternal cousins. So like all the mothers would go um, over the summer, we go to... Um, one of the Alexandrian beaches and would just like all be together and they need to feed a lot of kids. So it was like pasta with hot dogs, um, which is not food. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, from childhood, it was my grandmother who cooked the most and she was such a great cook. And they, my grandparents traveled a lot. So they would collect recipes wherever mm -hmm. they would go. So one of the recipes that I actually have no idea about the origins of, she said she took it from someone in Italy as they were road tripping through Europe with their five-year-old, who is my mother. Um, she has this um, pasta with olive oil, garlic, and green coriander. Nada kuzbara is coriander, right? Yes. And it's delicious. And she would sometimes <laughs> add chili to it. And then I asked one of my Italian friends, is this a thing in Italy? She's like, we have a lot of pasta, a lot of, um, you know, ways of cooking pasta. So I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then there's also, I can't speak about Egyptian food without speaking about molukhiya, which is... Um, juice mellow I think and yeah. we, we just we add a lot of garlic my house is a garlicky house we add a lot of garlic to everything and uh, yeah so we make this green soup and add rice and chicken to it <laughs> um, but um, I'm just looking at the questions how I record and share recipes is and I also I think I learned about cooking through observing my grandmother pretty much which is very similar to your story too mm. and then 
what I would do is I use I I learned more about cooking during university because I wanted to not study pretty much like find other distractions and uh, <laughs> so I would collect those recipes that I still I still use to this day so like there's this one chocolate cake recipe that that I really like and trust and then there's a kosheri recipe that I actually shared with Katarina. <laughs> um, and kosheri is How this... did you share it with her? I wrote it down. I, like, I'm like, mm. Katarina, please, I'm so sorry. I don't know about serving sizes or like what to use, but you can just use a handful or a cup or I don't know what. <laughs> no. um, and then, yes, it was also in the newsletter, the Ecoversity's newsletter. And kosheri is a very interesting thing because like you get the lentils from India and then Egyptians added the pasta and the rice and tomato sauce and then we add a lot of vinegar and lemon and again garlic i think garlic is just <laughs> i don't know i don't know what's up with garlic but that's what i wanted to share <laughs> um i want to pass it to namali again thank you um you said something oh the coriander thing, I'm totally going to try it because we have lots of coriander here. Um, and it just sounds like, it just sounds like when you said it, it just sounded like, oh, why have we not done this before? <laughs> it just sounds so good. Um, I cannot wait to try that. Um, so yeah, me too. Um, my mom didn't cook at home either. We always had a nanny or a maid who would cook. Um, and my mom was very focused on eating healthy food and also living frugally. So that meant that a lot of the time, like we did not enjoy the food that was served on, the, you know, I, very similar to what Sarah has said. I don't think it was as like, it wasn't really a hodgepodge of food, like, you know, pasta and hot dogs, but it was really bare bones kind of meals. Um, which is in huge contrast to my, not my husband's home, um, even his home, because he's also from uh, a single parent home and his mom is very similar to my mom. Um, they too have very bare bones kind of meals at home and she's also very frugal, but somehow the two of us are maybe in reaction. The <laughs> two of us are very like extravagant and just so generous when it comes to food. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, that was about, food history yeah so if you know you ask me like is that a food from my childhood that's like the food no like mm -hmm. I really can't think of um anything like that um and then you want to know what sorry I, okay let me check the chat uh, how did I learn about cooking actually I learned a lot from my husband um mm. he it's really he's really I mean he he keeps saying that you know he would have loved to go to cooking school he was just not allowed because you know culturally it was like oh like men don't cook kind of um so he wasn't allowed to do that but he just learns off YouTube videos and I think I don't know like he's eaten a lot of very good very fancy he's from a very wealthy family so he's eaten lots of very fancy food and lots of different kinds of cuisine so he and also he's clearly got like a talent for cooking. So he's really good at, he'll just watch like a video or he'll just go taste something at a restaurant and he'll come home and like put it together. It's really inspiring. Um, so I've learned a lot from him in terms of, you know, the places he's taken me out to and just kind of learning to appreciate the different flavors that come together, the different textures and all of that. So that's, I've learned a lot from him about um, cooking. Mm. And then um, actually, I uh, something you said, Nada, uh, made me think of the fact that I approached so Sri Lankan rice and curry, like I approach curries very differently to mm. how I would approach. Mm. A, well, a cake that I bake, I suppose, partly because baking a cake does require you to be 
kind of careful about measurements and stuff. Um, but even if it's say a beef stew, I have like a really good beef stew recipe, like a really old school beef stew. Um, it's just so hearty and so good. But I tend to keep going back to the written recipe to kind of check how much of what I need to put in just yeah. to make the flavors balanced. Um, but when it comes to curry, I totally just wing it. I I at one point I did call at first when I started cooking, I called my mom and I'd be like, okay, what do I need to put in this curry? Um, and she just say, oh, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And I kind of, and then we had, we actually hired a cook for some time. And I noticed she just like winged it and everything just came out so nice all the time. And then, so I decided, okay, I'm going to like stop, you know, obsessing about how much of what to put in there. So I started like smelling the spices and just yeah. thinking, just this go with the food I'm cooking, you know, and just like dumping however much I felt um, into the curries, you know, and it's, suddenly my husband is like, oh my God, like you can cook, like what happened? <laughs> <laughs> so I think I think when I kind of stopped taking um advice from my mom about like how much of what to put in the curry like I that's when it became a creative process for me and I started really enjoying it and really kind of connecting with this part of me that wanted to nourish my family um you know um so yeah that's something I just thought of um yeah how do I record and share recipes um mostly the internet actually <laughs> um and yeah sharing is just usually links and whatever um yeah mm -hmm. that's me um thank you sorry thank you it's really nice to hear all your story like i i get totally fascinated by yeah and let me pass the ball to um Tasni? Riti? Riti. I thought you would choose me and you did. Yeah. So to coming to the question, how did I learn cooking? Uh, to tell a little background about, okay, I think I should pass it to somebody because there's azan going on and nobody can hear me. After this, I take it back. Uh, I pass it on to Ale. Wait, let me guys find the question. Um, so I'm so sorry, guys, but my mom is a good cook. Um, but like she's a good cook who doesn't like cooking. So she ends up cooking one thing a week. And the moment I, I walk in the kitchen and I find that lentil soup thingy, I know that we're going to eat it for the next week or something like that. So, but I like it um but something that makes me that's something that fascinates me is my mother and my grandma's relationship because at some point it's very similar to telepathy or something because at some point if i don't like what my mom is cooking i call my grandma and ask her what is what are they having on dinner today and she's like guess what plant it and <laughs> i was like okay and so we just we're just not doing it anymore but um my mom and my grandma has this strategy and they actually tell you that if you are not good at cooking, if you don't know how to cook three dishes, like which are like the national dishes, you're not going to travel to go anywhere. And, and it's just like a myth at this point. And it works because my sisters learned these things and now they are not in Sudan anymore. And it happens like over a year or something like that. So we, we just believe in it. And last year when I was in Sudan, I was like, this Ramadan, I'm, I'm eating, I'm, I'm cooking this for the 30 days and no one is going to do this. It's only me. And after Ramadan, I was no longer in Sudan. And it works, guys, let me tell you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they have their ways of connecting things to actually teachers and stuff like that. And how we, how do we record them? My grandpa, my grandpa and my grandma has these weird rituals where they actually be like we they just be sitting somewhere and they were like oh my mom used to do this this and that oh my mom used to do this this and that and they're just like competing with like verbally um but we don't have something that's written down or something uh one food that i remember from my childhood um 
one food that I remember from my childhood. I don't know. I just remember something that we eat and we still eat. It's called borscht and it's basically beans and veggies and stuff like that. Um, and it's it's very funny because some one time someone someone from the Ukraine was in Sudan and he, he was eating that and like it was for a week or something and and he, he was talking to some of his friends on the phone and he was like guess what Sudanese are vegetarians on breakfast and then they go back to Roma when it comes to dinner and stuff like that and I never thought about it before because everyone eats this on breakfast and I was like wow okay but like it just gives me some kind of how balanced our things are without even having the terminologies for, for stuff like that yeah mm. Mm. I will choose mm. Moo. <laughs> you don't want to go now? What, what What's happening with that um singing? You're talking to Riti? Ah, Riti. Yeah, I am. God. <laughs> <laughs> thing yeah you can tell i can go ahead anything is all right uh, okay. yeah uh, one moment because then uh, we have what 10 minutes left together or what yeah 10 minutes and then we'll start preparing okay. for the next session that will be coming yeah in. okay so it would be nice sure. that everyone goes so i'm sorry but let's let's uh yeah. i mean share and from the heart always and leave space for everyone. I want to hear everyone, everyone, everyone. <laughs> so I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So uh, for me, what I remember or where the first question that goes, how did you learn cooking? So as a, as a child, I have always been very curious and like different things from cooking to, you know, sitting and knitting so I would do different things but on a very surface level I would experience explore and leave it that's how it would go and as a child I used to stay in a nuclear family but in a um, joint family like there were different kitchens that we had of the same you know community kind of big house so I would eat from almost all houses because I was I was a very social child I would go around every very thing and you know making merry and things like that the food that I really liked or remember from my childhood is any any kind of sweet. The sweet that nobody would even think of eating. Even if it was sugar, I would eat. Like if there was no other sweet around, then I would eat sugar. That, that's the kind of madness I had for uh, sweets. And I think it's exactly opposite now. Now I hardly eat sweet. Now I need salt. So I, I think the, the kind of quota that's there in your life for sweets or any particular food sweets are over because I think first 10 years of my life I just ate sweets that's the kind of uh, uh, thing it was and uh, I learned cooking from my mother uh, mm. she has specific recipes that she really cooks well and I find it very interesting she's not a very big nice fan of you know cooking but whatever she cooks is very unique to how she does and I like that about it and I also learned cooking from my cousin who herself is very interested in cooking so yeah that's where I learned it from and uh, now I do it need based I am not very focused with cooking I generally have my mother cook at home and at the workplace that I have it's more like my family like this is my second home kind of a thing and there's a cook or somebody else who's cooking all the time so I just eat that's how it is mm -hmm. but uh, I don't find the need also depending upon the requirement if there is anything some beverages, something basic or, you know, things like that. I would do that. And I prefer buying things and getting like the recipe requirements. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, I'll come and give it to you. Whoever wants to cook, cook it. I'm not interested in cooking. That's the kind of approach I have. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's that. And uh, I generally, yeah, internet is one thing or you know we write recipes we are into healing and um, we are into natural foods and we're exploring uh, gardening and composting having our own uh, kitchen garden and you know um, gardening so when we do that so we're kind of exploring different things at different times sometimes somebody comes and tells us sometimes uh, we write our own recipes we learn from a workshop or a session who gives us different recipes 
So we're kind of collecting it from everywhere and we, we are interested in a community kitchen. That's what we want to build. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that's, that's that. We're trying to make our own bread. We're trying to make our own doughs. We are trying to make our own, um, you know, uh, the idli yeah. batters, batters. So, you know, all those things we are kind of exploring all the time. So that's how we keep sharing, depending yeah. upon however the media makes. And, yeah. And I pass it now to Mo. Mo, Mo. <laughs> I'm going to smash this out. I'm aware of, I'm like, oh my God, the time. Okay. Mm. How did you learn about cooking? Um, I'm going to have to say that, I'm going to have to say, um, <laughs> my stepfather was the only person that um, I think really knew how to cook. Um, and that was, um, I guess that's problematic because my stepfather was also um domestic violence so um uh but he was french um and uh yeah and i just yeah i just remember um uh flavor and meat a lot of meat <laughs> um uh and he used to, he, he took me hunting with him when i was a child um and fishing um yeah um and seeing so seeing the whole process of of Mm. that um um okay so yeah I think I got yeah I got some more kind of creativity from him um how do you record and share recipes I don't (laughs) I don't really yeah I don't think I do um and um one food that you remember from childhood um uh Cheese, potato, carrot. Okay, like, okay. It's like boiled. It's like, is it boiled frozen peas? Like carrot, the same, like so kind of soft and and just, uh, and then potato, like a scoop, like an ice cream scoop with like, yeah, basically just like completely and utterly br- uh, bland, bland food with, with meat on the side and I remember that because um I had it it felt like I had it every single day for a decade <laughs> or something with my um living with my 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 grandmother um so yeah both my grandmother and my mother um yeah n- not um really uh well I don't know uh, connoisseurs I would think um mm. Yeah, so that's that's me. Pass it on. <laughs> Pass it on. <laughs> Thank you, Mo. Mo, I I really I don't know, but I I, I really feel connected to you. <laughs> yes, same. <laughs> Who's left? Katarina and Ki. Um. Uh. Ksenija. Ksenja. Ksenija. Are, are you the speaker for the next uh, space? No. Oh, we can't hear you. I thought that your workshop is 15 minutes longer, so I just wanted to dive in because I'm trying to keep myself away. And it's oh, a good my choice God. because this is really lively. This is really lively. So, yeah. So can I go next or would Katarina go first? Um, I don't know. Then make the decision. I am really, I don't know what to do now. Go, go, <laughs> just go, 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 go. Okay. Go, go, okay, go. So and we need to mom, be really fast because the time is finished. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go really fast. I'll go really fast. So my mom was not a good cook and I never liked <laughs> eating. For me, for me, eating was a waste of time. And <laughs> in, in the country of my origin, you either... Uh, live to eat or you eat to live and I was definitely the one who would just eat to live just barely to survive never liked meat and trained my dog to um, every time when we would eat I would put meat on the little shelf under the table and I trained my dog to eat it when mom was doing when mom was doing the dishes so she wouldn't see that she he's picking up meat and I hit because I never liked meat 
So all my life I was kind of, oh, yeah, yeah, let's grab something. And I never, never really enjoyed food until I grew up. And mm. then when I grew up, I realized that I love raw food. I love dragon fruit is my favorite, like digging into red, juicy dragon fruit, um, uh, ripe peaches, uh, really fruit. So that's my thing. I cannot, I don't have the ability to follow the recipe, but I like playing with food. So I like mm. cooking for people. When people come, I like playing with food. But I just literally cannot follow the recipe. I have to eat something. So, yeah, fruits and nuts, my thing. But also, yeah, I can cook. Now I can cook and I like cooking for people. Yeah. Okay, that's me passing it on to Katarina. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay, um, so how did I learn about cooking? I always liked cooking because I always felt it was a bit like uh, making the magic, you know, mixing ingredients, stirring them, and something comes out. <laughs> and uh, I started uh, cooking when um, I realized that I wanted to make cakes and my mom refuses to cook cakes. She says it's alchemy and she's not a witch. So I said, I'm going to be the witch in this house <laughs> and I'm going to start making cakes. <laughs> that I would try to follow a recipe, it would never work. So I just invented cakes by myself. <laughs> um, and of course, then I, I uh, also was buying some recipe books and checking it online. Then my sister actually is a nutritionist. So now we also invent stuff together. Although she's a Virgo, so it's really hard to do anything with her in the kitchen because she just takes over. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, we do uh, share a lot of recipes between me and my friends so when we share um, when we have uh, dinner parties or anything we are cooking together and uh, we are learning ah you do this recipe in this way okay I love it let me try it also like that the next time we see so it's like evolving recipes between us and uh, there's uh, several foods not that I was thinking that I remember from my childhood that they're mostly from my grandmother and my great grandmother from a specific area in Portugal. And uh, one that I only ate when I was small and I never got close to it again is called jumada, which is basically just egg yolks with sugar. And you just mix them and you eat it raw like this. And uh, it's like the most caloric bomb ever. And I remember it being so nice. <laughs> and then um, I became fat as a child and uh, my mom forbade me from eating it and forbade my grandmother from cooking it for me. And I never went back to it, but I think uh, one day I should uh, try it again and be amazed. <laughs> uh, so it's nice to see now that uh, many of my childhood uh, memories are from mm. my grandma even though she died when I was eight so it's like a long time and uh, yeah mm. nice connection there mm. then thank you thank yes. you, thank you so friend. much oh, I'm so sorry like for the technical caca <laughs> that we got so late no, thank you for sticking with it and for enabling this beautiful mm. dialogue. I think it ended up to be a wonderful session. So mm. thank you. Thank and, you, uh, everybody. So you take it then. I don't know how you close, but close. Cool. So maybe we can offer some gratitude for Nada for bringing this beautiful dialogue to us. Maybe some hearts, some claps. Amazing, some fingers, amazing, some... amazing. <laughs>